start to loosen restrictions. Here to discuss the warning in more detail is nine health expert Dr. Kyle Coley. Nice to see you, Dr. Coley. Hi, Ryan. Nice to see you. Um, so, so let's. It's there's a different uh, differentiation between second wave and second peak. Explain the difference to us. Yeah, let's talk about this because it's an important distinction. So many experts say that large pandemics such as this one come in waves. So what happens with the wave is that you have the original outbreak, then you have a, a decline in infections, and several months can actually go by before you get a second skyrocketing infection. So that's shown on the left here. And you can see that that could happen down the line, for example, in this current pandemic in the fall. Now we saw this with the Spanish flu where you had the first wave, then you had the second wave, which was actually taller than the first wave and then finally the third wave. So the good thing about having a second wave is that it's usually far away. It allows you time to build up resources in the middle during those months where you don't have viral activity. The disadvantage of the second wave is it generally doesn't tend to be in our control. So things like weather can also influence the second wave and it's hard to predict when exactly that second wave would occur. Now that's in contrast to a second peak which usually occurs within a wave. So that's shown here on the right hand side in green and what you can see is that we're within our first wave, but Dr. Ryan from the WHO was really warning about a second peak that could occur within the first wave. And of course, the downside of this is you don't have time to plan your resources. You're still just recovering from the first peak in the first wave when you have this second peak occur. So of course, there's concern about moving too fast. What other indications does the World Health Organization have that there could be this second peak within the first wave? Well, one of the biggest concerns is that we're right smack in the middle of our first wave, ac according to the, you know, the global pattern of spread. Now, some places are ahead, some places are farther behind, but we're right in the middle of our first wave, so it's a high-risk period. We know that the virus spreads very efficiently and very quickly from person to person. So loosening some of these social distancing requirements and opening up some of these businesses could really facilitate that spread and cause that second peak. And what we've seen with other coronaviruses in the past, like with the SARS epidemic that occurred in 2003 is in fact they did have a second wave that occurred a couple of months after the first one. It seems like we can prevent at least the worst of this Dr. Coley. What can everybody do to prevent this second peak during the first wave at least prevent it from being as bad as it, it could be? I think the take home messages, Ryan, is that this is within our behavior. That second peak within the first wave can be controlled if we continue to separate the people. And then, of course, we need the testing in place as well to know when it comes back. So those are the two things, separating ourselves and continuing that social distancing and the testing in place. I know it feels like we're starting to loosen restrictions, but all of these things, the masks, the social distancing, that remains in place and it remains a critical part of, of preventing it from, from worsening. Exactly, and the WHO's warning is not meant to scare people. It's just meant to remind everybody of the fact that we're not out of the woods yet. This thing is not gone. We can't pretend that it's gone. We have to keep keeping it at bay. It's far from over. Dr. Coley, thanks for joining us. Uh, good to see you. It is proof that Colorado's wildfire season doesn't wait until mid-June.